everyone. We are welcoming um, Kyle Kim Jong um, as our guest musician this morning, so we hope you enjoy the gifts of guitar that he brings. here at Plymouth Church, both in person and online, and Facebook and YouTube. We are glad you're here. And I would just like to make note of the fact that last week we celebrated Easter, and we said Christ is risen, and he is still risen. He is everlastingly risen. And that's good news. Uh, as a church, we are intentionally affirming of the LGBTQIA community plus intentionally welcoming of diversity in all its forms, intentionally accessible with our redesigned building, and intentionally respectful of the indigenous caretakers on whose land Plymouth Church resides, the Menominee, Potawatomi, and Ho-Chunk people. So know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And now, um, Oh, call to worship, sorry. Uh, sometimes the news we receive is so good, we have a hard time believing it. That's true. To go out and be We're like Jesus' disciple Thomas, who doubted the resurrection. That's just where faith comes in, believing where we have not seen. May God open our hearts and our spirits to receive the promises, the good news of Easter. Let us now rise in body or spirit to sing hymn 253, Yours is the Glory, Resurrected One.
this litany. And join, please. We've been in hiding for too long. But suppose that destruction, fear, and death arrive at our door. Jesus always said to us, Do not be afraid. I am with you. Lord, help us to believe. Why is it so difficult to believe? We have been disappointed so many times. Everything is different when we trust in Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to believe. What will we do if we actually see the risen Lord? Our fears will be banished, and we will live in the truth of Christ. What is the truth of Christ? Christ has overcome the bonds of death. He is risen and goes before us. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Do not fear, dear friends. Jesus is among us, offering new life and hope. Nothing can prevent God's love for us. Rejoice, for you have made new in Christ. Amen. And now, I'd like to read, in the same spirit, I would like to read one of my favorite scripture passenger passages from Romans. The Apostle Paul said, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Well, now let's do the Gloria. Youngest among us, please come forward at this time. Well, if you're young at heart, you can come too. That's fine too. All right. Oh, goodness. Oh. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, we're going to do some guessing. All right, let's do a start with our centering prayer. Let's see. Holy Spirit, give us peace. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. How is everybody doing this morning? Good, there's lots of thumbs up. Okay, so Natalia, you asked me what's in the bag. Can you guess what's in the bag? Is it a lunch? Or is it a unicorn? Is it a cat? Is it, would you believe if I told you it was a dog in this bag? No. <laughs> Why would you believe that there was a dog in the bag? It's too small. Oh, hmm. Well, this morning in our text, I'll tell you a little later what's in my bag afterwards. There is a, a guy in our text this morning named Thomas. Has anybody ever heard of Thomas in the Bible? He's a biblical character. His name is Thomas. Some people give him a label. His name is, some people call him Doubting Thomas. Oh my goodness. So Thomas was one of those people. He was not in the room. Um, some of the disciples, they were locked in a the room. They were afraid. Oh, because, you know, of all that had happened, some women said that, hey, Jesus is alive. And they were like, oh my God, he couldn't be alive. We didn't see him. We saw him put him in the tomb, but yet he's alive. And so they were afraid. And then Thomas wasn't there. He shows up and they're telling him this story. And they're like, he's like, unless I see with my 
my own eyes, I touch it, I will not believe. And so Thomas is many ways like what you all were talking about this morning when I ask you, is there a dog in here? No. Is no. there a unicorn in here? No. Is there a cat in here? No. Are you sure? Okay, let's let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. There is a egg. A dog is in here. He's on the egg, yeah. All right, all right. Is there, let's see what else I have in here. It is a unicorn in here indeed. And so what Jesus tells Thomas, he's like, hey, you know, I, I want to, you can touch my side. He says, bless those, you know, even when they don't believe. Jesus is okay with us, even if we have doubts, if we don't believe that a unicorn or a cat or a dog can be in this bag, that Jesus invites us to bring our whole selves, our whole brains, our whole being to the table. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for our children this morning. We thank you that they use their brains and their hearts and their minds to love you. And we ask that you will bless us uh, as we continue our journey of learning about Thomas this morning. This we pray in your name. Amen. All right, it's time for Sunday school. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Good morning. The scripture is John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31, page 115 of your pew Bibles. When it was the evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The continuing testament to Sometimes You Are Thomas is written by Steve Garnas Holmes. Starts with scripture. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the side of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Sometimes you are Thomas, shattered, needing evidence of the goodness of God, the power of grace, and theories will not do. Stories are not enough. Wounded, you need something you can see, something you can touch and feel. This is not doubt. This is reaching out. This wanting to connect is faith. Bless it. Sometimes you are Jesus and around you are others broken 
who need evidence of the goodness of God. Stories will not do. You will need to embody resurrection, give flesh to forgiveness and the power of love over fear. Make real the grace that brings life out of death and remakes us when we have been ruined. They will see it in your wounds. They will touch it in your presence. They will feel it in your life. Their reaching out is God coming near you. And just a note, the next hymn is 394. In Christ there is no east or west. Good morning, Plymouth members and friends. Good morning to those who are watching us on live stream this morning. Please pray with me. Dear God, be with us in our time of sharing this morning. And God, what I prepared is not what you have in mind, but God, that you will put it aside, that you will speak boldly in this place. For we need to hear a word from you on today. For this is my prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have you ever heard a story and you thought to yourself, there has to be more to this story? Maybe it was a television program. Perhaps it was a, a story told by a friend and maybe you had exited the room and come back and you only heard the punchline and you were wondering what is the story really all about? There has to be more to this story. And this morning we encounter John 20 verses 9 through uh, 31, verses 19 through 31, and we feel as if we are sitting in the place of uh, Thomas. And he feels as if there has to be more to this story. When we enter the first of uh, the story uh, right away, it, the disciples are locked in a room. It feels like a good episode of Scooby-Doo. The disciples are hiding in a locked door and they are afraid. Maybe they are afraid for if Jesus was taken by the religious authorities, they would come for them. But in the midst of their fear, Jesus comes and he stands among them. He says, peace be with you. He stands in that locked places, even in our own lives. He comes declaring, peace be with us. In the places that we are locked behind closed doors, the women have come and they have told the disciples that he wasn't in the tomb, that he is alive, and he offers them this peace. Thomas enters the story maybe a week later, and he's gotten a bad rap for years. He's considered, as we told, Down and Thomas. 
He wasn't there when Jesus appears. He gets the highlight reel of what has just transpired. And they are telling Thomas, the one who had seen Jesus die and being put in a tomb, and they're saying that he's in a, he wasn't in the grave, as they said, and now he has appeared to them behind locked doors. And Thomas is like many of us. He responds as any of us would. He says, unless I see his hand, then I will not believe. Thomas needs proof. Jesus does what scholars call a performative faith. He allows Thomas to have the proof he needs to increase his faith. Jesus allows Thomas to touch his side. Some scholars say that we don't even know. It doesn't say in scripture that he touched his side, but Jesus provides a mandate. Do, you know, he gives a promise. He says, bless those who um, disbelieve but believe. Where we've seen performative speech before, we've seen it in Genesis when God says, let there be light. And when Lazarus was in the tomb and he simply by a word says, Lazarus, come out. And the question for us this morning is, where are the locked doors this morning for us personally? One other writer says that perhaps the locked doors were the fear for the disciples that Jesus would be unforgiving for the way that they had betrayed him. That Jesus responds to them and us. He he breathed the gift of the Holy Spirit on them and he says, forgive you, forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. He forgives them. Ayanna Watkins Collins, the Disciples of Christ minister who writes for Christian Century magazine in an article called Limited Faith in a Risen Christ encourages the readers as we've all maybe for years thought about maybe the disciples that they were maybe just simply sexist, sexist men, but she says don't just discount them. She says maybe that they were locked behind closed doors hiding because they believed that the Messiah, this Jesus that they had seen and believed and yet they see him die and be placed in a tomb and they believe that he is not big enough for for their opponents. On Friday, I went to a, um, a, um, a com- it was a, a speaker that was here um, in town at Whitefish Bay uh, United Methodist Church. And he was talking about, he gave the story of Desmond Tutu. And as this, I was thinking about the disciples, and he was saying how Desmond Tutu, um, when he was surrounded by all of the opponents during the apartheid era, He declared that our God was even bigger than that, even those who could have put him in prison, even those who could have uh, arrested him or killed him. He declared that God was even bigger than apartheid. And I think that that's what we learn in this scripture this morning. Jesus says to us that maybe who we who are locked behind closed doors, he says, peace be with you. Perhaps every time I look sometimes at the conflict in the Middle East and maybe another headline of maybe children who are dying behind starvation or maybe people who are coming to help rescue um, those in the Palestinian territories or just ongoing conflict, I maybe wonder, is our God bigger than the conflict at hand? And maybe it's not just the Middle East then maybe you're pondering that this morning and wondering the conflict in your own lives. Is God bigger to help you overcome it? And that we sometimes are hiding behind closed doors. Robin Henderson Espinoza, a scholar, writes in um, the magazine Living Faith, like Thomas, he, he says, I don't always believe, that we often label Thomas a doubter in the group. The word meaning is doubting is far from doubting. He says the Greek word for apetis, meaning the negation of something, and apetis meaning belief or believing. So according to John's gospel, Thomas wasn't doubting. He was not believing. He just simply needed more proof. Doubt means a lack of certainty or a lack of understanding about something or someone, while not believing is the orientation of not having enough data or experience to fully believe. He says that um, Thomas' encounter with the living Christ was transformational. 
Where are we who are hiding behind locked doors need that transformational experience? What kind of doors are we being locked behind? Could it be that we who have never known or volunteered or experienced um, food insecurity, that we sometimes, that we don't see it, but we wonder, do people really need all of that food? Why don't they just work? Why don't they just pull themselves by their own bootstraps? Because we have not experienced it. Like Thomas, he needed that transformational experience to be transformed. Could it be that we who had never known not to be having to be able to live or being accepted by to be our authentic self, that we think that there's no need for people shouting about concerns for LGBTQIA concerns? There are plenty of churches everywhere that, can, that deal with that, but Espinoza reminds us that you know, it is about the experience and the transformational moments. He says belief can be marred. He says such things as fear and close-mindedness and lack of trust and pride and laziness and ingratitude, belief like this is stuck. It can be turned toxic. We don't have to look far to find toxic belief in today's world. So, so sometimes we, we label it as Christian. What do we take from the message of Thomas? I think we are called to remember what Reverend John Collins writes, that we are called to remember our past experience of God's presence and peace in the world. When our doors are locked and we are fearful, we are to remember what God has done. I remember my former pastor, Reverend Joseph Roberts, when he knew I was going into the ministry, he reminded me to keep a notebook of where I had seen God's hand in the world. And maybe that's something for us that we who are um, hiding behind locked doors because of fear and doubt, that when we see what's happening in the news, that sometimes that we become doubtful. Can God or our God is big enough to handle the situation at hand? Or maybe as we talked about last week, maybe it's a medical report or our children or just circumstances in our lives that we need to remember what God has done. We need to see the miracles at hand. One of the joys in my life is being um, in ministry is walking beside people. That sometimes they're giving maybe six months to years to live, and yet we see people living five years. Miracles at hand. Sometimes we see maybe parents that are struggling with their children, and yet we see God do a 360 in their lives and turn their lives around. Those are miracles at hand when we feel all is lost and we are doubting. What does Thomas teach us behind locked doors that science and faith doesn't have to be mutually exclusive? We can have faith and believe that God created when God said that God things were good in the creation story and science to tell us how it was done. We don't have to leave our brains at the door to be people of faith. And finally, I think the third thing that we learn from the story of Thomas and John 20 is that we must change the narrative of our lives. That we are, the more, the, and we are more than the stories that we tell ourselves or others say about us. Thomas is more than a question or more than a doubt. David is more than his affair. Sarah is more than the woman who laughed at God. We are children of God. I think about the woman with the issue of blood, that she was more than her issue. And so are we. The disciples who had left Jesus on that Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, they were so much more, and Jesus saw that in them. And that's why I believe that he says he comes behind those locked doors, fearful and shame about what they had done. He says, peace be with you. And what does he do? He breathed the Holy Spirit on those disciples. And they began to go out in great ways. The gospel, John's gospel offers a commissioning of the disciples. Again, Jesus breathed them and parting of the Holy Spirit. He blessed them and he said, peace be with you. The same peace that Jesus spoke to the disciple, the same gift of the Holy Spirit goes with us in our closed doors. In the moments where we have fear than faith. In the moments where we, like Thomas, need more details to the story. That God offers us God's grace. To give, to give, to ask the question over and over again. 
And I like Talma's story because one of my dear friends in seminary, that she is, uh, she's from South India, and she talks about Thomas being this great leader. He doesn't have a leader of doubting Thomas, but great leader who brought Christianity to India. Many Christians in India trace their lineages back to the Apostle Thomas. Thomas, the one who needed a little bit more detail. Thomas, the one who was a martyr for his faith. But Jesus was okay with him asking the question. I leave you with the words from Salt Project. They say, it's as if Jesus says, I understand that you need to see and touch my body in order to believe and I will oblige. But there's an even deeper form of faith and trust, an even higher gear of understanding that isn't dependent on signs and wonders or even on the presence of my physical body, but rather has the ears and the eyes to discern me within you and among you and throughout creation. And it says that I call you and commission you toward that deeper faith, that higher understanding. Now I give you the Holy Spirit and send you out away from my physical body and to an even deeper blessed intimacy with me. Even my resurrection, the signs of all signs, isn't the end of the road for you. With the Spirit's help, go, climb still higher. There is more blessed faith beyond signs and wonders, the trust of those who have not seen. And that's the message this morning on this second Sunday after Easter that we say to you, it's okay to ask the question. That God offers us grace upon grace. God offers us grace upon grace as he did for the disciples who felt as if that God, that the God that they had loved and they had trusted that wasn't even big enough for the problems at hand, that they were locked behind closed doors. And so God commissions us this day, on this Communion Sunday, that we go out. He says, peace be with you. And he breathed the Holy Spirit upon those disciples. And just as he did, as they were locked behind closed doors, he does it to us in our lives whether we're concerned about medical or where we're concerned about our children or we're concerned about our own lives or maybe they're not on track as where we had hoped and dreamed that they would. He breathes the Holy Spirit on us and he says, go out and do great things. Hallelujah and amen. During the offertory, please pass the red key pass to the center aisle to let us know that you are worshiping with us this morning. If you're watching us on live stream, please fill out the Google sheet and let us know you're worshiping as well.
May God be with you. People of God, open your hearts. People of God, give thanks to the Lord our God. And together we sing their sanctus. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for that your testimony of John 20 that commissions the disciples in John's gospel. That God that doesn't um, is not mad at us or um, beats us up, but God blesses us and provides us with peace and commissions us with the Holy Spirit. God, we pray this day for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. Maybe those that we are holding in our hearts and our minds, that God, that we lift up their, their names to stay, that God, that we know that you are bigger than our struggles, that you walk beside us, that you grant us peace in, in the midnight hours, the days that we are walking the floors, wondering, God, are, are you going to answer our prayers? or even times like Thomas that we're needing more details to the story. God, be with us. Be with us, uh, those in the Middle East. We pray for those in our cities and our towns as we are in the midst of this election season. We pray for those who are in the midst of, they sit in the midst of violence and they need reconciliation. We pray for, for those who are in, sit in the midst of violence and they need a, play, a safe place. We pray for those who have experienced domestic violence. We pray for those who've been um, victims of violence. We pray for those who are needing jobs and are needing um, homes to live in, food and a sustainable food for their bellies and prayers for their children that they have safe places to go to school. Thank you, God, for the way in which you love us and you care for us. We pray for our church community, God, that you will bless our hands and our feet, that you will uh, be with us as maybe the concerns in our hearts that maybe we don't even know, but you say you even know the hairs on our heads. So you know our concerns, and so we lift them and we cast our cares for you to you because we know that you care for us. We thank you for the way in which you love us and you care for us. Bless our hands and our feet and our mouths that they will proclaim your goodness. And most importantly, we thank you, God, for the ways in which you bless us. Not looking to the right or the left, but always walking in gratitude. And now we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we remember on the night of Jesus' desertion and betrayal, he took the bread and he broke it and said that, this is my body which is broken for you and for me. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup and he said that this is my blood which is poured out for remission of sin. The body of Christ and the cup of salvation. So we remember that we are the body of Christ. No matter where we find ourselves, no matter how far we feel that we are estranged, maybe from maybe our immediate family 
or maybe from, maybe you're watching at home, you're estranged from some church community, but we are the body of Christ. There's nothing, as uh, Barb said, can separate us from God's love because we are the body of Christ. This cup we take this day is the um, remission of sin, but we also remind ourselves of our individual gifts. And when we take this cup individually, we remind ourselves that we're never allowed to hide our light under a bushel, but we shine it for all to see that we're always glorifying our God, which is in heaven. What that means that you might say, I'm too old, or maybe I'm retired. No, as long as you have breath in your bodies, that we are called to allow our light to shine it brightly for all to see. For this is an open communion table. What does that mean? You don't need to belong to this church or this denomination. All who wish to experience the love and the joy of Christ are welcome at this table. Come, for all things are ready.
Susie's going to come and talk about uh, learning about Christian nationalism in just a second. But just a reminder that today after church, um, there will be sandwiches, and we thank God for, um, you know, the opportunity to do for Street Angels and for Sachin for his uh, leadership and also Boom as well. Um, so if you'd like to use your hands to do uh, the work of service, please join us after church in the reception hall. Then there's a benefit concert today as a violin and piano um, recital. Then there's uh, tomorrow, there's St. Ben's a food drop off. And the Women's Book Club is meeting at Eastside's uh, library on Tuesday. Then Wednesday is our senior moments. If you've never been to our senior moments, they call themselves our family seniors in our church to uh, get together. They discuss different moments, but it's an opportunity just to for fellowship. Then there's a bell choir rehearsal and chorale uh, rehearsal. And then we have our Jericho Walkers who stand at the ice building on Thursday to declare that the whole people are important. So if you ever are interested in that, I'll have all of our ice people, I mean our Jericho Walkers, please raise your hand. And maybe there might be some folks that might be interested to see those people with their hands raised. And then our Board of Stewards meeting is at 7 p.m. We're meeting on Zoom. And then there's Pathfinders uh, drop off. And then next Sunday, um, oh, the, this weekend on the Saturday, we're doing our Christian Nationalism Workshop. It's here at the church, and they're all are invited. And then on uh, Sunday, we'll have a reception of our new members here at our 930 service. So we look forward to that. And so we'll have Susie come at this time. Thank you. Uh, one of the, the doors of fear that we sometimes stand behind, I think, are, is our fear of what's done in the name of Christians in our, in our world, and particularly in our country. And as, as a response to that, Micah has created the We All Belong campaign, Micah and Wisdom, which I hope you've heard about, which I hope you're familiar with. And as part of our efforts to further that campaign to resist against Christian nationalism, we're having a workshop, and it's in your bulletin. There's a nice long page in it. There's flyers out here. And we'd like to encourage all of you to come to next Saturday morning uh, in, the, in the reception hall uh, to learn more about it. It's a workshop that's run by Micah, and there will be uh, opportunities to hear from, on video, uh, from uh, many uh, people who uh, have studied and who know some things about it, and then to talk about it amongst ourselves in small groups and, and respond to and think about how we can uh, go forward in this, this fraught season uh, of the elections. So um, I hope you will come. I hope you will invite others. We've invited other congregations to come and join us, and we hope that there will be some other people here from other faith traditions uh, to share in us. And I just wanted to say, too, that several of you were at the Jim Wallace talk that Teresa referenced in the, in the sermon today, um, who is a, a one of the leaders in this movement. And um, it's, very, it's very uplifting and inspiring to hear about what Christianity really is and how we can carry that message forward. So I ask all of you to join us. Um, and if you have any questions, please uh, contact me, Mary Warren, or the church office. Thank you. Please stand for a closing hymn. Oh, wait a minute. I always forget. Let's greet one another. Good morning to those who are watching us on live stream. And please invite somebody to coffee hour.